Hey y'all, it's Jake with the Atomic Armadillo. Uh, tonight we're going to be doing a video about how to shorten a 67 through 72 C10 fleet side. Um, one thing about this method is this is what we call the tipping method. So this only has one cut line. So um, I'm going to just kind of roll into it. And uh, if you guys have any questions along the way, shoot me a comment, uh, message page, something like that. So um, first and foremost, this is your front panel that would be inside your bed. What I did is I drilled out all the spot welds on these because you're going to reuse this piece. Uh, in this case, this one's pretty damaged, but we're going to repair it and use it. And then we're going to go on up here, and I'm going to explain your tip line and your cut line. So if you've never done this before, you are going to actually tip the metal back over this edge. So in this case, this edge right here will get bent the metal over the edge of it. Um, you can do this uh, with a hammer and dolly, um, a, you know, certain kind of pliers. For myself, I actually use tipping pliers. Um, these are actually what they call a, a jeweler's plier. Um, it has brass ends, so it doesn't mar up the metal whenever you tip it over. Because uh, in this case, we're trying to preserve the patina um, and, and kind of just make it all look fluid in one, one thing. So <clears throat> whenever you're doing this, you're going to measure 12 inches from your outer edge. Once you do that, you're going to put a line, or in this case I did tape so you guys can visibly see it, and then you're going to measure back three quarters of an inch. So you're going to have 11 and one quarter. That is where you're going to cut at the 11 and one quarter line. Once you cut that off, you're going to have just that piece and you're going to tip at the 12 inch line. I know it's a lot of numbers, I'll try to explain the best I can. Um, once you do that, <clears throat> you'll beat it back over the edge and you can kind of see where the rust line is on this. That's where it's going to lay and you're going to make sure everything's straight, lines up good, and then you'll re-spot weld it back in and you'll be done. P pretty simple it sounds like. Um, I'm going to show you over here. This is one side that we already did. <clears throat> so I haven't welded up the inner piece because it has some rust and we're going to replace it, but we went ahead and tipped the edges and then re-spot welded it all back in. And if you look from the top, the line looks just like it would from the factory and you don't have that cut and you can't really see the differential. Um, whenever you're doing this, take your time and slowly tip the edge back and forth as you go and that'll keep it from having a lot of high and low spots. So with that said, let's go back to the rear here. <coughs> so. Uh, on a short bed conversion, on these generations of the truck, I should say, uh, they are 20 inches shorter altogether. So you're taking out 12 inches out of the front, 8 inches out of the rear. And one thing about this is it kind of gets a little hairy in the back because if you cut it straight, the lines won't line up. So you kind of have to jog it over a little bit. So what I do is I measure 8.5 inches off the back edge to here. And then I'll measure 8 inches to here and make my lines. So if you measure three inches down from each point and you make a 23 degree angle, I know it's a super weird thing, that's if this is 90, or if this is, you know, uh, in this case like a level point if you're breaking angles, this is 23 degrees. Same with this, and that'll make them come together. What that does is that allows this area right here to line up correctly so it has a smooth transition. <clears throat> because if not, if you line this part up, if you just cut it straight, you're going to have your lines off a little bit down here on your lower body line. Uh, this, this truck that we are working on is pretty beat up, so if you're like, why are you even doing this, you'll see later. <clears throat> but that's kind of the thing. So it has this weird jump over, like so. And that's kind of what it is. So it looks like right here, there's, you know, it looks like it's only a few inches, but and actually it's, you know, eight inches, eight inches, eight inches, all the way through until it planes back out and then straight up. Um, in this case, I measure, a lot of guys are asking, well, how am I going to get that angle? I measure, I get a square, I measure three inches off the back here, um, and then eight inches over, and that's my center point. Three inches off here, I start my transition over, and it'll meet this line. So <clears throat> you go three inches down to here. You're good to go. So uh, that's going to be your hardest part. It might take you a little bit of trial and error to doing your layout. I wish I had a better way of explaining it, but I did my best. Um, but this is your finished product. So whenever you do this this way, it has a nice transition. Uh, 
you know, you can hammer it out, make it look, you know, nice and smooth. You don't have a lot of issues <clears throat> in this case. Uh, you know, it works out. On the bottom, whenever you do this, you're gonna have a whole bunch of excess down here, which I haven't trimmed off just because I wanted you guys to see this. So you'll weld this little piece up and then you just kind of round it off into there and uh, it'll look just like factory, minus, you know, you have your cut line. But if you're painting the truck, there's no worries for it. So um, if you guys have any questions, like I said, message the page, message me. If you like this, share it. I'd love to see it, you know, get float around. Uh, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.